All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Friday Night Craft Beer Hangouts Spotlight. Uh, this is one of our usual uh, efforts that we do during the week where we invite uh, somebody from one of the craft breweries to come in, bring a little bit of beer. We're still trying to work out the thing where they bring the beer for us, but we'll <laughs> eventually get there. Uh, but for tonight, uh, we have with us uh, Ken Fouch. Uh, Ken is one of the regional sales managers for Lagunitas, who is a major player in the craft brew industry and we're looking forward to talking with him. Ken, how are you doing tonight? Very good. Thank you very much for the invite and uh, looking forward to hanging out with you guys. Not a problem. We are too. This is uh, this is going to be a fun hangout, I think. We've already been talking with Ken and he's been regaling us with his 10 million bottle collection of, of ephemera that he's got. And he uh, with me tonight... 32 Wilson Avenue in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. He lives where I'm going to be if there's ever a zombie invasion because I'm going to his house, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. With me tonight is Boris Castillo. Boris? Hey. How's it going, What are you guys? drinking tonight? What, what Lagunitas offering do you have with you? The... One of only two that I haven't had down in my part of the reservation over here in New Mexico. A uh, little something, something. Right before, I, right before I got here, I picked up a sixer. So, Good stuff, good stuff. Gil, Gil Mello, uh, you're coming to us from uh, your basement today, I believe, right? I'm finishing my basement next week, so I'll be feeling cold. <laughs> <in the winter. laughs> what are you drinking, bud? I have uh, my favorite of all. Unfortunately, they don't get that anymore. Brown sugar, my last bottle. Excellent. To follow. And then if it's too standing, I'll have a sensor. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Felix Estrada, you're coming to us from very hot LA. Thank you for putting a shirt on before we uh, actually went live. We do appreciate it. <laughs> I do it for the fans. San Diego, actually. I would oh, never San Diego. My apologies. That's all right. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm starting off with uh, the tried and true. IPA, jumping over to Hop Stupid and, and very soon. So. Excellent, excellent. Matthew Miller? I uh, I had started with the Sucks, and I drank that before we went on air. <laughs> and now we're on to uh, uh, a brown sugar. So you know, Nice. It, it's a hell of a hobby when a Lagunita Sucks is your warm-up beer, right? That, that's my... <laughs> that, that's my. <laughs> That's right. I want to ease into it with a with a seven and a half percent. You know. <laughs> there, there you go. And finally, last but certainly not, not least, the professor Tom Hennigan. How you doing, Tom? Hey guys, how you doing? It's been a long time. I think I'm going to start off. It with has sensor. been. You got to be more regular. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah, life. It's tough. We, we miss you. We miss I got you my life. sensor all poured out, and then I think I'm going to try the Maximus next. Nice. Very nice. Very so, cool. And and I just jumped in on, this is a Lagunitas that I've never had before, Lucky Number 13. And from the very second that I cracked the bottle just a few minutes ago while we were doing intro, um, that, uh, that almost sweet citrusy floral uh, aroma just, I mean, it comes right out of the bottle. Wow. We're going to talk about this one before we're done. Quite tasty. Quite tasty. Yeah. So, I got I got something to ask you about that league because I had it on tap about two months ago, and I had no idea what it was, and then I drank it. I was blown away. Then I researched it, and I was like, "That's exactly what I got out of that." And I want to make sure you got the same thing that I got. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So, uh, let's jump back to Ken for just a few minutes. Ken, um, why don't you just give us a little bit about your background, your history in brewing and food? Because you're not just a brewer uh, or a marketer for beer; you're actually uh, a bit of a foodie as well. Uh, give us, uh, give us your bio, your background. Uh, de definitely a big food person. Uh, I went to the Culinary Institute of America in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, nice. Had a, yeah, that was just killer school and, and really, you know, jump-started my beer and my palate, you know, being with sommeliers that go on over there and stuff like that. Uh, had the pleasure of working in New York for a little while and, and then Boston after that. Um, I actually moved out to Jackson Hole, Wyoming and worked at the Teton Steakhouse, if anyone's ever been there. Mm -hmm. uh, killer, killer spot out west. And then I um, actually found myself at the, the Lucky Monk, a brewery in uh, the suburbs of Chicago, uh, running that restaurant and being able to brew over there and be a recipe uh, creator and kind of met, you know, some of the right people in, in Lagunitas. Tony McGee's best friend um, lives right down the street from that brewery, so kind of saw him a lot and became friends with the right people and, you know, got to uh, enjoy uh, working for these guys now. 
Very cool. Now, how long have you been with Lagunitas? Uh, I've been there about nine months now. Um, you know, we started talking early, earlier last year and just kind of waiting for get, you know, things to get rolling here in Chicago. But, uh, yeah, I'm still a little bit fresh, but, um, you know, definitely enjoying it. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So who wants to take the first crack at uh, embarrassing, uh, making a, uh, a bright red face or whatever at Kim? No, I mean, who wants to welcome I'll our, our guest? I'll jump in. Do it, Matt. This is the one I've been wanting. You know, whether you're drinking a sucks, a brown sugar, or uh, you know, or the undercover ale, just about all of them. There's this particular hop profile that you just three sips out of the glass and you're like, that is a Lagunitas beer. Yeah. So what's the recipe in measurements per hectoliter? <laughs> no, you know, a certain you know more West Coast style. You know, you're definitely going to find the Amarillos, you know, the Simcoe's, the Citra. Um, you know, those are staples. I, I honestly think a lot has to do with our yeast strand. You know, we only have three yeast strands in house, and that is our ale yeast strand. Um, as, as a lot of you enjoy the Pilsner, we, we you know brew a great Czech Pilsner. We have the lager, and then we have a little something wild. You know, the West Mall yeast strand. So I think a lot has to actually even do with the yeast that when you when you have a log and eat it, you know you're drinking our beer for sure. And you think that profile comes out more in the yeast as opposed to the hops? I, you know, I really think it's kind of a 50-50 thing. To be honest, it, you know, we do have a lot of the similar hops in our beers, but I think a lot, you know, as you know with the Unibrew, you know, when you crack a Unibrew, you know it right away. And it is, you know, of course, you know, the, the aroma of the yeast, but I think you know, a lot has to do with that. You know, and in addition, it could also just be the brew house itself. Uh, you know, that very definitely impacts flavor profile, uh, not only just the practices of the brewers, but, you know, for beer, it's almost like um, terroir is for a wine. Uh, not quite, but it's kind of the similar idea. So it could be that, too. Who knows? Because, because you talk about the West Coast beer, but even comparing to the West Coast beers, uh, Lagunitz has a very unique taste. This caramelly, I call this caramelly taste to yeah. it. It's very unique to uh, Lagunitz, unless you, you know you get a cappuccino stout or something that are off of that IPA segment. You really, as Matthew said, you get oh, that is a Lagunitas. Um, you know, one thing you know, and I'm. I'm probably going to release some information that you know, we don't normally talk about at Lagunitas. You know, if you know as a home brewer, we don't necessarily always talk about all the hops that we use or exact recipes. But, you know, a lot of our beers do have just that touch of wheat in there. You know, we don't really do the whole gluten-free thing. And I think that's why the certain body comes out a certain way. Um, you know, the u uniqueness of, of some of the crystal malts that are in our beer. You know, I think that, again, you know, uh, kind of helps out, you know, some of that house flavor that you know of all of our beers for sure. Michael Tangan is plugging that shit into Brewsmith right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we will have a published recipe in five minutes. Excuse yeah. me, I, I've graduated from Brewer, Beersmith to my own spreadsheet, man. I've, <laughs> oh, man. Uh -huh. yeah. I'd, I'd like to know what you think your own spreadsheet gives you that Beersmith wouldn't, but that's probably a conversation Actually, for a separate hangout. The, the luxury of not losing data. Wow, that kind of hurt. That kind of hurt. Okay, oh, back to Lagunitas. just left the Hangout Live. All right. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Our only viewer. I've actually um, done it one time, the hop calculations, you know, mathematically on paper one time, and I swear to you I would never, ever do it again. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of brutal. Yeah. Kind of brutal. All right, so why don't you uh, feed us a few numbers. Uh, Lagunitas uh, brews... How much per year, uh, you know, whatever, for the raw brew nerds out there that like all the stats, this is like if you were a basketball player, we'd be asking you about, you know, shots from the field, free throws, stuff like that. Give us the equivalent for, for Lagunitas. Um, you know, actually, th this year, last year, 20, uh, 2012, we jumped up to the sixth largest craft brewery in the nation and uh, the 13th largest brewery in the country. And that includes your, you know, your Budweiser's, your Miller's, your craft brewers. So, um, you know, not, not only are we definitely on the map on the craft side, but to be honest, you know, we're, we're trying to knock some people off, you know, even on that, that full scale of brewery side over there. And, and I think, you know, as we get our brewery rolling here in Chicago and get some production going, you're going to watch us jump up, you know, in, in that top five range, which is just going to be absurd. Uh, you know, last yeah. year we, we ended at, at 260,000 barrels for the year. Um, you know, which was just a killer, killer year. I think we're up 78% as a company, which is just um, absurd numbers. Uh, we are the fourth year going the fastest growing brew in the country. 
So, I mean, that, that's just something really to be proud of, showing consistent growth in here. Um, cool. You know, I, we do have some capabilities of, of maybe uh, 600,000 barrels, but I, I don't know about that. You know, it would take a lot out of those new fermenters that are sitting in Petaluma right now. Well, you, you know, that, that, brings, that brings us nicely into the conversation of, you know, you're making good beer. And, and uh, that's what I hope is bringing it home. But honestly, uh, you guys get a lot of heat from the other breweries because you're 2 or $3 cheaper a six-pack. You know, the $10 six-pack is pissing the hell up out of all these other craft breweries out there. And, and is that part of the formula for success? <laughs> I, Don't tell I, them to I, raise the price, Matt. <laughs> I am. I, you know, yeah, really. If you talk them into a price range, we're kicking you out. I'm just saying. Other breweries have probably tried to sue you to raise your prices. <laughs> I, I mean, and they have. And this is something that it started with uh, from Tony from early days. Um, you know, we have actual uh, incentives for our farmers in Alberta, Canada to grow the grains for us. You know, and... and you know, if a farmer come in time for harvest, they have a choice to fertilize their grain and try to get the grain to gain some weight and, you know, use it for feed, or, or they could, you know, do it the appropriate way and, and the way they should and make brewers, you know, barley out of it. Uh, so we work directly with a few farmers in Alberta, Canada, so we were able to hold and lock down a, a solid price on our grains. Um, and then same thing with our hops, um, you know, with the hop farmers in Yakima Valley, you know, they're creating their their own Lagunitas, you know, strands out there and stuff like that. And we're paying, you know, we paid this year, uh, the farmer, all, all the equipment, all, everything you need for a thousand acres of experimental hops, you know, so now we have the rights to those hops. And that's a huge thing of holding down the price. And for you wow. guys that get daytime, uh, you're going to see daytime this year at seven ninety nine price point for a six pack. So, I mean, that's just absurd. Um, you know, that that's something that we're always going to be, um, we try to you know, pride ourselves on the blue man Collard's working beer, that that person sure. is working their ass off. They can still go home and get a great beer at, you know, at a great value you know, and drink good stuff. And it, you know, yeah, that, that makes good sense because for whatever it is that I'm buying you know, mentally, and it's not just me, this applies to everybody, I've got that sort of mental cutoff beyond which it's a raw number and it has, you know, uh, it's kind of visceral. Beyond yeah. that number, you've really got to knock my socks off if I'm going to invest that. And for beers, in a six-pack, that is 10 11 man, at $12 for a six-pack, I'd better, you know, that thing better come with a winning lottery ticket one out of 10 times, right? Um, so if you guys are staying below that, that's cool. You know, uh, I don't, I hate to call it any other brewery, but I am because they're new here to Chicago, and I thoroughly enjoy the beer, and I'm going to state that first, but Ballast Point, you know, their six pack uh -huh. is fourteen ninety nine. Um, you know, that's probably hard. scared me off. I, I, I just I can't spend fifteen dollars on a six pack. I mean that it's hard to swallow that. Yeah. Yeah. Well we're, yeah, we're, um, gonna, we're gonna interview them in two weeks, so my bombers are three ninety nine, so I mean I am sure they love my three ninety nine bombers. So. Yeah, nice. You, you know for, you know for that price I can go uh Ama Gang last year came out with the Art of Darkness, which is a phenomenal dark uh, I believe it's a dark lager, I don't remember off the top of my head. But yeah. it is a phenomenal beer, but at sixteen or seventeen dollars for a yeah. bomber Ah man, that's that's a celebration beer kind of yeah. thing, you know. But there is more and more of that now with the bigger bottles, the bigger bottles and the bigger price points. At least I'm seeing anything, much anything from the brewery. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, for for instance, the uh, the thirteen uh, lucky thirteen, and this is a good size bomber. This is a uh, uh, what is. Um, 22 ounce. Yeah, 22 ounce. Uh, this was five five and a half dollars after taxes. So, you know, not not bad to get a you know an, an eight you know eight percent beer for for five yeah. bucks out there. You know, that's something yeah. on your way home from work. You can always grab that five dollar bomber. And never question that for sure. Right. Yes, yeah. but the government, but our lawyers have asked us to say, don't drink it until you get home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but for the for those of us that. And I, I consider myself a beer snob. I might drink eight beers a week, and six of those are going to be everyday beers. You know, I'm not going to drink six twenty dollar bombers of brewery a week. No, you know, I'm going to drink a six pack of Maximus and and then two special things on Friday night. So you know, if, if, there's room in the market for both of you. I, I like that you brought that up because I'm the exact drinker that that grabs a six pack and two bombers. And yeah. that's definitely how I always go. You have your staple, 
you know, drinking beer, your daily drinker, and then you, you know, end of the week or a special night, then you have those bombers. And I, I completely agree with your drinking there. That's right on. Yeah. And for the longest time, sucks has been my, my six pack. You know? <laughs> it, it, there's a few others out there. That Union Jack from Firestone is pretty outstanding. So um, yeah. those, wait, are, those are the ones yeah. you want to drink two of in a night. I, I, yeah, I, you know, no offense to any particular. I'm sorry, Gil, go ahead. I just would say that probably uh, next to Founders, Lagunita is one of the brewers that we most mention on our hangouts. Oh, I, we, sure. You know, I, I, we generally appreciate that. You know, that's something. Um, you know, we try to really be in tune with people out there, and you know, and and I'm 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 always gracious to hear how much people love the beer and love the product, and um, you know, it's a great feeling every day to hear how much people enjoy what we have going on here. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I, we, I did. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Boris. No, I, I just wanted to say, Ken, we, you you guys literally just hit New Mexico last summer in this in the southern half of the state, which is where I'm at right now, and I have known about you guys for at least three years, at a minimum three years. So, because I think you've, you've been on the East Coast for a while. So, when I found out that you guys were hit here, um, my local grocer, uh, he he was telling me, he's like, yeah, we're going to get Lagunitas this summer. And the first thing I said, I was like, get little something something. I was like, <laughs> you need to get that beer first. Then get, and then I just ran off like five. And he's like, really? He's like, have you had it? I was like, I've never had it. I was like, I don't need to have it. I just need to go online, search Lagunitas blank. And <laughs> it's at least, I mean, at least 4.25 out of 5 on every single beer. Yeah. And the very first one I've ever had of yours before, uh, probably three or four months ago, was uh, your Pilsner. And I, I was blown away. I was like, man, this is... This is great. I was like, it, it, in the Czech style, which many, you know, I, w I would probably say not many breweries do a Czech style. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it was it was awesome. It was so great. And I actually told a friend of mine that drinks Coors Light. Yes, sorry. I know I have friends that drink Coors Light. <laughs> we, all, we all do. Let's, <laughs> we, so, we, have, we have friends that drink PBR, Boris. Oh, do you really, Lee? <laughs> no, Man. No, 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 we do. No, it's no, a no. true story. <laughs> So I was like, all right, we were at a bar and they don't serve any of the of the three beers you see on TV. So I was like, get him. I looked at the tap list. I was like, get him a Lagunitas Pills, please. And he drank the whole thing. And I yeah. was like, yes. Uh, like, you know, we, we really one. pride ourselves on that Pilsner. That's been something that, you know, there's a reason why we only brew one lager. Um, when you do it that good and, you know, any brewery can make a mediocre ale and kind of mask it with hops a little bit, but yeah. to brew a good, you know, good lager, that takes real craftsmanship. Um, you yeah. know, I would be happy if we never had another lager ever. The pills is it. You know, I, I love that beer, so I'm glad you enjoy it, man. That's, that's awesome. Oh, and um, I know you guys brought up Sucks real quick. Um, you'll be happy to know I just got information that Sucks will be coming out in a 32-ounce quart. So it's um, it's going to retail at five ninety nine for a quart of suck. So that's going to be our, our year round package. Uh, <laughs> nice. That is the oddest, good, greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> you know, you know, since you're being so honest, what's what's the joke behind undercover shutdown ale? Uh, we've okay. all speculated about it, but but nobody really knows. Are you allowed to talk about it? Are you legally? No, I, I I can definitely talk about it and be completely honest. Um, you know, on St. Patrick's Day, you know, um, guy was it 2006, uh, 2005 on St. Patrick's Day, uh, we were throwing a retail party at the brewery, and we were getting kind of known as a, a spot where people kind of smoke and hang out and have a good time. Uh, our COO Ron rolled the joint with uh, an eight-inch joint, a sushi roller. And there were undercover ABC agents there for the local uh, California ABC agents. And, you know, they were right next to him when he lit it up, man. So he, you know, lit it. You know, he had his green card, so it wasn't a big deal. But they slapped cuffs on him. Uh, we actually, that was pretty horrible, man. We got shut down uh, for moral interpretude. Uh, it means that we run an unclean brothel. It's like a, a 19... <laughs> <laughs> They, they were they were undercover at the brewery for for um, I believe this was two months undercover at the brewery trying to buy pot off of our employees and 
you know, people would give him joints and they would give him nugs and, and no one was looking to sell drugs. We're not drug dealers. We're just hippies, you know, or just stoners. <laughs> so it, it just, you know, so we, we initially it was one year we were shut down. We went to court. I think it went down to four months. Uh, went to court again. We got it for 20 days. Uh, and in that time, we actually uh, put in our new bottling line that does 550 bottles a minute. Um, so we were actually planning on shutting down. We were able to brew beer. We could bottle beer. We just couldn't distribute it. So um, we paid her fine, man. We did the time. And if anyone ever, um, you know, has a bottle of Undercover, you know, I believe it, it's dedicated to all the astronauts out there. And the <laughs> ABC agent that, uh, that shut us down, his real goal in life is he, he wanted to be an astronaut. So, so cheers. <laughs> that that oh was, you know, Ken, that was, that was great and a really touching story. But what I got is I need to do a road trip up to the brewery <laughs> very yeah. soon. So, you know, yeah. if, 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 if you're up, up at the brewery and, and you want to smoke, just go off the property. Just don't do it on our property. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, man. Yeah. Undercover shut down, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The so electric we're trying, boogaloo. We're trying to take a little more laid back style now, you know, and yeah. <laughs> ask a real, a real brewery, a real brewing question now. You said 260,000 barrels last year? Yeah, correct. Is that all Petaluma? That's all out of one facility? That is all out of Petaluma, and once P Petaluma hits capacity, uh, which is going to happen shortly, um, you know, in the next year, they're actually going to uh, be at 700,000 barrels. Um, and then with our, our brewery here in Chicago, we're actually going to jump up, and we'll be doing about 1.7 million barrels a year. So, Just in uh, Chicago? Yeah, the 1.7 million is going to be out of Chicago, yeah. Now, what kind of, what size, is that 100-barrel brewing? I mean, how do you... No, we, um, we, we have a 250-barrel brew house uh, in Petaluma and an 80-barrel 80, 80 uh, um, barrel brew house, and they're both from Rolex. Um, Stone got the first 250-barrel brew house, I believe, from Rolex, and then we have the updated version. Uh, and now we have two 250-barrel brew houses going in Chicago, so we're going to double that. What do they go for, 50000 60000 apiece? Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, no, that is good. That's, way, that's way cheap. Maybe add a few zeros, yeah. It's <laughs> probably the value of a decent house in most cities in North America. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet. I, you know, we're like in a 30-something million range right now for this brewery here in Chicago. Uh, we're going to have 180, 750 barrel fermenters. Wow. Uh, three bottling lines. I mean, it, it's, it's going to be it's gonna be pretty absurd. Where is there, Chicago, Chicago, like, Chicago are you building? Or, and all that? I'm sorry, I, I didn't get that. Hey, Ken, are you sticking with bottles? Any um, idea of looking at canning? That seems to be uh, you know, I, I was actually with their owner Tony McGee last week. We were at the uh, at our new brewery here in Chicago, and um, you know, really, that's kind of up to you. It's definitely on our map, and it's in our thoughts. Uh, up to up to us, the six of us, because we'll vote on it right um, now. I, I yeah. can't. I, I have, hands. I have a Raise your so hand. we we have talked about it, and, and you know, if we're going to put it in a can, the first beer that's going to go in a can, and maybe the only beer is going to be daytime in a can year round. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that's very appropriate beer for it. Um, you know, it's not 100% on the map, but, you know, we first need to get, you know, the Chicago brewery open, um, you know, and then as things are, I guess, stable and we can, you know, have, you know, we can do that, you know, that, that is definitely on our mind. Very you know, cool. If you're brewing at capacity from both places, you're talking uh, over 2 million barrels a year. Where would that put you in the, where would that put you in the, uh, the top breweries of America? Uh, it would be 2.4 million barrels a year. And um, that, that would be number two in craft beer right behind Sam Adams. And I believe they hit 2.6 million if you include their, their ciders, you know, that angry orchard that they all love. Yeah. Um, I, you know, so we'll see if Sam Adams maybe doesn't grow anymore and actually ends up dipping back in barrels. And maybe that puts Lagunitas in number one. Um, but really, I, I don't know. Tony's already so forward thinking, you know, he, he's, he's probably going after Anheuser-Busch, to be honest. Yeah. Well, he can have them. <laughs> where, uh, where in Chicago are you guys building? Uh, that's going to be at 18th and Rockwell. It's the old uh, Ryerson uh, Steel Factory, or like 16th and Rockwell. Uh, it's in the Pilsen neighborhood. There's um, a company called Cinespace that, that owns the, the property around there, and they actually filmed Chicago Fire there. Uh, I believe the Superman movie was filmed there. So this is kind of like the new Hollywood is kind of going to become Chicago, and we're, 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 you know, dead smack in the middle of where all this is. And when I was there last week, there's, you know, you know, the stars, little trailers all over that they're all their makeup rooms and stuff like that. So definitely some cool stuff going on in the neighborhood. So you've got obviously got massive growth planned for the future right now. 
Yeah. Um, is I know marketing's got to be a big push, and you've got a solid lineup with the beers, excellent beers right now. Anything new on the board coming out that you can talk about? Um, you know, to be honest, man, to, you know, Tony's very straight up in that, you know, beer speaks, people mumble. Um, you know, our IPA, <laughs> their first beer, you know, our first season of Lever in 1995, and, and it's still 60% of our total business is that one beer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we really pride ourselves on the IPA. Um, you know, if you ever see any of the fusion beers around, you know, those are our experimentals to possibly go in rotation for seasonals. And when a seasonal does well, then it moves into the full-time rotation, as we've seen uh, a little something-something go from a seasonal to full-time, and there have been a few others that have done that. Um, you, know, I, you know, Sucks was the big thing, you know, that, that of course is the one coming out year-round, and I think you're going to see daytime hit year-round, so that'd be solid. Okay. Sucks uh, in a 32-ounce half growler, that's awesome. That is killer. Uh, I'm going to hit my dog real quick and let him out, all right? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Dog abuse? That's what it's called nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I linked to, um, and those of you watching at home, um, hopefully it'll be in our info section under the video, but uh, check out lugginews.com slash tag slash Chicago. You can check out this some amazing blueprints, not necessarily blueprints, but sketches, and um, post the models chat, of yeah. the Chicago Brewery. He did post it in chat. No, sorry. Pay attention. So this place Bob. looks massive, and it looks really. It's going to be. It's a pretty big deal. Um, something really cool that I just found out about when I was with Tony last week. Um, you know, I knew that the tap room was going to be suspended thirty feet off the production floor, uh, and it's going to be enclosed in glass. So that uh, it's beautiful. Be, I was about to ask about that. Um, and, and then the other cool thing is that the, the city of Chicago does not, they don't want people in direct contact with, with the production line and the bottling line. No, nope, because it's... Know, in yeah, in California, you know, you can take a bottle off of the bottling line and drink it on the spot, but that's not going to happen here. So we're actually going to build a tube that's going to go around the perimeter of the brewery, uh, you know, a glass tube that you can actually walk around and it's all fire safe and everything like that. Tube. What you should what you should do is actually make people sized gerbil balls and yeah. let them roll around. <laughs> and you know what? All you gotta do, if you want to use that idea, just send me some beer. That's all you gotta do. Okay. <laughs> For four ninety nine you can buy it yourself. One really, really special thing that Tony informed me that just blew me out of the water last week. Um, there's actually gonna be um, uh, a bar up on the roof of where this 15 million cubic feet, you know, brewery is. There's going to be a bar up there. Uh, I believe he said it's going to be 7,000 square feet. Um, so that's probably going to be like our amphitheater that they have out in Cali, probably where ours is going to be. So he's got some just some great ideas that are flowing right now. Yeah, excellent. Did you, did you know there's a bar on the roof of the Metropolitan Museum of Art that overlooks Central Park? I that, know it. Yeah, and it's it's a glorious view up there, unrestricted. You just have to walk up a flight of stairs to get to it, and it, not many people know about it. So, I didn't think about that. Um, the city of Chicago, from where that's at, sixty feet up in the air, that it's going to be a pretty sweet view of Chicago. Should be good. Um, Gil, you Gil's been having some problems with his mic, so so normally we let this stuff go pretty easily. But Gil, you had a, a question you were trying to get. No, it's just uh, I got the noise back here, but um, I had a question from the community here. It seems that you guys are not in West Virginia and Indiana, and I have people asking, if you're so big and throwing, why you didn't hit those states yet? Um, you know, really, you know, honestly, it comes down to production, and we just we don't have enough beer for, for Texas or for Arizona um, to this open up true. more markets for us. It's only going to hurt really other people. So um, rather than be a brewery, and, you know, it has happened to us in the past, but you would open up a state, and, and then you realize 90 days into it that you can't do it, and then you pull back out. So rather than doing that, you know, and we have the capability when Chicago is open, uh, you know, though, we're, we're going to knock out the rest of the 50 states. Um, you know, it, it's really, really important to us that everybody is able to find the beer. So it's coming. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of interesting that you mentioned that, Ken, because when I was trying to get beer for the Hangout earlier today, <clears throat> I called uh, up in Austin, I called a place called the Whip Inn, which has a tremendous tap line, and I asked them which Lagunitas they had available on tap, 
And the guy at the bar was like, well, we don't have any of them because we'll get them in and we'll get a couple of deliveries of case, of barrels for the uh, kegs for the tap line and then all of a sudden it'll go dry for a month and we have to replace it with something else. Is this all still part of the same growing pains problem? You know, honestly, it is really part of the, the growing pains. You know, it's definitely, you know, even, even here in Chicago where it's this new home market, you know, we're still having, we're still having issues here. You know, there, there are weeks where our flagship beer, you know, we're, we're within maybe five kegs of, of not being able to fulfill orders. Um, you know, a little something forever is going to be a problem. So, I mean, it, it's still very tough. And, and you know, Lagunitas works very hard on trying to distribute the beer appropriately, you know, and really be fair, you know, to every single market that we are available in. Okay. Very cool. Uh, I do want to point out real quick, uh, Ken, where are you at right now? Are you at home? I am at home. Yes, I am. Okay. Can you pull down that poster you've got over your head in the frame? No, not the Lagunitas, the other one. Yeah, there you go. And give us a close-up. This is one of my favorite posters. I've seen it available. And it's a map of all of the beer styles. Oh, yeah. I have the same one. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, Gil, do you have him blue boxed so that showed up? He did. Okay, great. Yeah, that thing's great. So your your beer cr geek cred went through the roof when I noticed that up there. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I've got a lot of really cool. Um, God, what do I have? I've got like the get get hazed, you know, tin that I really really enjoy. Um, you know, a local brewery tight head out, out in Mundelein, Illinois. You know, I've got a couple tins of those guys, but uh, definitely a big beer nerd and, and like promoting everybody else stuff. Excellent. I got a, I got a question, Ken. Yeah. Um, when your your Chicago brewery is not up and running yet, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> to I guess to ensure the quality that comes out of California also comes out of Chicago is are you guys is your brewmaster slash head brewer that's making the magic right now in California, is he going to be coming out to Chicago to do the same on a periodic basis, or are you going to hire from within your next in line so then nothing changes from what comes out of Chicago to the centralized states and any of the northeast states that we get out of California to the western half of the yeah. country? Um, I know the question has been coming out, you know, who is the next brewmaster at Chicago? Uh, I did just find out about that recently. I, I'm, I think everyone's going to be blown out of the water, you know, uh, and who that's going to be. And, and always the big question is the water chemistry from, from Petaluma to Chicago. It, it is so, so different, the water. Um, to be honest, Chicago has such phenomenal water that it, it's a lot easier to dumb you down the water than it is to take crappy water, honestly, and make it good. So, you know, the water chemistry is honestly not going to be a huge issue for us. Um, you know, we still have the same hop farmers in, in, um, in the Yucca Valley that are growing the same exact hops, the same alpha acids. You know, our, our barley farmers are both the same for everybody. So, you know, honestly, it's not going to be that challenging to duplicate the quality for us. Um, and to be honest, so, so no, the, the, the next person in line in Petaluma did, is not going to be the brewmaster here in Chicago. <laughs> I, I cannot wait till, you know, follow Tony on Twitter, um, and I'm sure he's going to release one, one the brewmaster, um, you know, who, who it is. And, and everybody thought we were going to take somebody from, like, a Haymarket or a Three Floyds or a Russian River, uh, and, and it's nobody even close to that. And I think it's going to blow people's minds for sure. Hmm. Sweet. Smart guy Thank you. Setting kegs and growlers from the back of his truck. It's not a bad thing to be where he is now, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that old Ford Ranger that Tony was uh, slinging kegs in, you know, in 95-degree heat and trying to sell some, some piss-warm beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's pretty cool. And, yeah, it's, it's come a long way. And, and Tony still is the most humble guy you'll ever meet in your life, man. Um, I got the, I, he's a big blues musician. I got to see him over at Kingston Mines, uh, an old school Chicago blues bar. Uh, you know, he plays his 40s blues and stuff like that, so it's just killer time. And you, you'll never even know him when you see him because he's in Holy Levi's and, and crappy loafers and a washed out t-shirt, man. Did you, I'm sorry, Ken, did you, uh, you might have said it while I stepped up. Did you mention when Chicago is supposed to open or something that's a couple of years down the road? 
No, no, we're, we're a lot closer than that. Um, you know, all the footings for the uh, tap room are in place. You know, the drainage is all in place, and we're actually hooked up to the city of Chicago now on our drainage. Um, half of the sprinkler system is in, so it means that we've covered now about, uh, you know, oh boy, what would that be? Eight, eight, 800 million or 8 million cubic feet of, of sprinklers are now are now safe in there. Some firewalls are getting in place. Um, so it looks like we'll be operation around October right now. So, you know, it's actually coming up pretty soon. Okay. That's awesome. Are you guys intended to do anything on the barrel age side? I mean, you guys don't do much barrel age, right? Other than the rye, I think it's the one that I only one I ever had. You know, I, I think that people kind of uh, maybe discredit us on on not, you know, we're not seeing the barrel age stuff and the sours. Um, you know, if you live in California and you go to the brewery, you know, we have sours on, you know, full time. There, there's plenty of barrel age stuff out there, and we do some pretty badass barrel age beers. Um, you know, we don't package it. You know, that's something that I think, you know, as Chicago rolls that you're going to see when you want the cool stuff and the rare stuff, you know, you, you got to go to the brewery and you got, you, you know, it makes it more of a special treat when you get there. Would you, would you mind talking about, because that's literally, those were the two questions I was going to ask because I knew someone was going to ask them, barrel age and sours. And yeah. can you talk about a couple of those that, that I don't even know about? Them. I'm in San Diego, but I haven't been up there. So Okay. Uh, let me see. Do I have it? No. I'm let me say, check my private awesome collection. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a BK3. No, but uh, last time, I, or no, back in February when I was in Petaluma, uh, you know, they had the, the B3, and it was like a brandy, a bourbon, and a, oh, man, something else. Um, but, you know, we do a lot of different blends and stuff like that, you know, with multiple different barrels. Um, our, our brewmaster, Jeremy, is super, super creative and does some really solid stuff. Uh, if you're up there and you have the Smoked Oyster Stout or you follow us on our, our Twitter page, um, you know, we're literally taking fresh oysters from the bay, smoking them, and, and getting them in that stout, you know. So we oh, do some, some really cool stuff that people aren't aware of. Felix, I hate you even more now. No, oh, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're still like 600 miles away or whatever. <laughs> you never liked him to start with. <laughs> hey, Ken, you're no, not. No, 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 no. I like Felix, sort of. <laughs> Ken, you're not doing that on a 250 barrel system. Do they have a smaller system that they do? That kind of yeah. test batch and those kind of small batch stuff? Um, yeah, you know, the, uh, we use our 80-barrel brew system for that, you know, for some of that stuff, and I know that still is an astronomical number uh, <laughs> in barrels, but, um, you know, that, that's kind of, I guess, our, not pilots, but that is kind of our fun system that they play with out there. Um, <laughs> 80 barrels of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird. In Chicago, um, we, don't, we don't have an 80-barrel system, you know, that's going to be put in, so for Chicago... Uh, it, it's going to be 250 barrel brews are, are going to be the, the ones for the specialty stuff. And um, for you know, anyone around the country, you're going to start catching some of these Fusion 16 kegs if you've not had one. Uh, it's kind of a grand slammer, they're calling it. It's 4.8 ABV. Um, it's got Munich malt in there, so it has this really different characteristic. And it's kind of our, we're trying to find a beer where we could go to ballparks and concert venues and try to find a beer that we could actually serve for people. And it has that really awesome drinkability like daytime, um, you know, going to be at a great price point for us. Wait, so Lagunitas is, 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 is almost in this, is almost in the session range. Is that what's going on there? Well, they're, you know, they're, that's they're, kind of what daytime is, you know, that's that fractional IPA. I mean, wow. You know, they're pale ale. I mean, I, I don't know. What do you call them when they're four, eight and like 60 IBUs? I, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think undercover shutdown is sessionable for me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's everything's relative, right? Uh, okay. oh, exactly, no Randy. That's like you think you think you have glasses on right now. It's so sessionable. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you have tonight, Randy? I'm drinking the uh, undercover. So uh, there you go. <laughs> all right, so so I think in, in lieu of the uh, the undercover. This is the 2006 Undercover, the first brew of Undercover after we got shut down, the very first beer. And so, it's like in the top few that came off the bottling line. So, so uh, are you trying to shame me? Is, are that you a, trying to, is that a bomber? I've got a really cool, like, little special dating that came on the bottle and everything. And, uh, you know, yeah. I've got a little cool commemorative bottle. Randy, 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 not trying. Well, in lieu of the Undercover, I want you to know this is a fresh 
2013 <laughs> <laughs> of undercover. <laughs> Randy will fight the guest of honor any any day. Of the week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But so I just jumped to the the hot stupid. So I jumped there from. Uh, sorry. What, uh, what's what's the IPA? Um, four point five. Something? Well, uh, the fusion. Yeah, that fractional four six. Oh no, the regular IPA. Six point oh. two, Felix. Six point two. There we so, go. Yeah, I, was looking, I was looking at all the ABVs. I'm like, I was gonna grab Maximus. I'm like, that's eight something. And then I saw what? Oh, what else was there? I forgot. But we we get a solid selection at our Albertsons, no less. Um, <laughs> but uh, just rubbing that in for everyone who doesn't have lived in craft beer nation. Yeah, um, we get Wegmans out here though, so suck it. Boom. That's right. I, I don't know what that means. Yeah. But do they do they have a craft beer section in the refrigerated beer aisle? Uh, how about? I'll take yes for twelve hundred, Alex. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> anyway, this like yeah, I was just earlier in the in the in the show we were talking about just the IPA is is so sessionable, but this is extremely drinkable too. The first time I had Hop Stupid, I was blown away. I think I had Pliny the Elder not too long before that. I was like, that was really really good, but this is. Five bucks, six bucks, and it's just as good, if not better. It's it's got it's not too malty, it's not too hoppy, it's delicious. It's just it's so good. So you guys, I just yeah. heard you say that Hop Stupid is better than Pliny the Elder. Wow! I think this advertisement brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a real fun similarity between Pliny and Hop Stupid. I know, right? Yeah. Something that a lot of people don't know about either brewery, but um, Pliny is, is hop extract, and we, our bittering hop in Hop Stupid is hop extract. Um, so that's why it has that fresh, clean 100 IBUs that isn't that resiny palate wrecker. Um, oh, and there's, God. yeah. There's, there's so, no wheat in that beer, and that's one of uh, two beers there's no wheat in. You know, uh, Hop Stupid, just uh, like two months ago, the guys on the, the panel heard me talking about this. Uh, one of my coworkers came into work one day, and he knew that I liked beer. And he's like, oh, Lee, I just got to try this brand new beer last night that I'd never tried before, and it was awesome. And I was like, oh, cool. What was it? He goes, it was called uh, Sam Adams. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's not a bad beer. It's a damn sight better than Bud Miller or Coors, right? I was like, okay, what did you like about it? He said, well, it was really, really bitter and kind of tart on the back end. And I said, really? Okay. So we looked it up and I said, you know, the Bud Miller Coors that you've been drinking is 10, 15, 20 IBUs. The Sam Adams is a 30 to 35 IBUs. <laughs> He's like, well, well, I love that part. And I was like, Really? So the next day, or a week or two later, a couple days later, I brought in a hop stupid for him, and he finished the whole thing and loved it. I Ram. mean, he he went from Bud Miller Coors, one stop at Sam Adams, and straight into Hop Stupid. Lamb meat lion, lion meat lamb, and that is yeah. why that is why they will sell all of their two point four million barrels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> my, father, oh, my my father is the the classic, you know, was a classic Miller Light drinker. And I and I stick started homebrewing with them now, but one of the first beers that really hit him in the craft beer was Hop Stupid. Hit and, him and in the craft beer. beer. <laughs> that is what I thought you were going to say. I know. <laughs> hit him right in the craft beer. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now you know the guy goes from Miller Lite to want, liking Hop Stupid, and, and I just you know it's so funny to see what what brings somebody in the craft beer, and that was not the beer I would have chosen at all. Hey, so when triple, you it's triple hop brew. Come on now, it makes perfect <laughs> sense. Cold I have to say, I'm really kind of grateful for having access to Hop Stupid when I can't <laughs> access. Yeah, there, to there, there's like a picture of the guy right there, out of a coffee cup. <laughs> And it's all we had, you know. I, he'd, have, he'd have chewed the bottle if uh, if I'd asked him to. So, so whenever the accountants are trying to figure out why you guys are losing money, you'd be like, shit, we should be selling this Hop Stupid for more than $6 for a bomber. <laughs> but we talked about that earlier. That's not going to happen. We did, yeah. yeah. You had to have been here from the beginning, Randy. You can't I'm just sorry. rehash old stuff. I was trying to be in two phrases at one time. Here. What's up? Hey, Randy, he says the daytime is coming out in six packs for seven ninety nine. Say what? <laughs> True story, my friend. So you're going to see it. I actually got uh, three different price points in the country. There's going to be two markets that are going to be six or seven ninety nine. 
two markets at $8.99 and two markets at $9.99. And we're going to see how the price point, if it has any effect at all um, on our IPA sales at all. And my wow. personal opinion here in Chicago, I'm getting the $7.99 price point. Um, I don't. I don't think that the person that loves IPA, I don't think they're gonna, you know, grab the the daytime over the IPA. If anything, because of the price point, they're gonna take both. So I, I think <laughs> it's gonna be a really cool test market that we're gonna find something out about here in a few months. Split so marketing. Buy all the Lagunitas all the time. Any anyone you see, <laughs> buy them all. There you so, go. Okay, guys, we've got here. we've got about ten minutes left. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna take some last questions, and I know at least one of them, Matthew. Have we asked uh, Kenneth about the big Sippa and whether or not they're gonna participate yet? <laughs> Two hundred and fifty barrels of the big Sippa. Hell yeah, baby! <laughs> uh, why not? No, Eighty <laughs> barrels. 80 barrels. Uh, he doesn't know anything about it, but since uh, it's our program and we're plugging our own our own wares here. We'll plug uh, anything we damn well please. We, uh, yeah. Uh, Ken, we are brewing uh, on the 20th of July with a half dozen other breweries. Breckenridge is in, uh, Brains in the UK. We're going to brew the same, relatively the same IPA and then do this all day, a hangout. So um, okay. if they want to make 80 barrels of a, of a, of a, a nice West Coast IPA, uh, email me. But, <laughs> but otherwise, uh, it is a, it's a great IPA. We're going to have band on the hangout, cooking shows on the hangout. Maybe we ought to have him in to, to cook with us, too. Absolutely. And then two months after that, about the middle of August or so, we're going to have a second event where we actually go to the tap houses or whatever uh, and sample it and try it. So it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, can I actually? I want to give you the contact for uh, one of my one of my best friends, Anthony Carollo. He's the brewmaster of the Lucky Monk. Uh, you know that was a ten barrel system. That's kind of how I got you know majorly in the craft beer was him. You know that that's a guy. You All know right. that has maybe a bit of flexibility in their brewing can, schedule. And, can we use your name? Can we say that uh, well, Kenneth true. Fouch threw you under the bus and uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you said you would. We, we, we have a we have a press kit all made up. So email me at, at, off okay. air and I'll uh, and we'll, I'll pass it on to you. Awesome. Thank yep. you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Have you guys, have you, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize that I had to duck out uh, through half the hangout, but have you guys talked about in terms of um, what Lagunitas is doing in terms of involvement in the community and, and uh, other charitable acts? Um, you know, that's probably something you're, you'll be happy to hear. Um, there are some months where we actually donate 400 kegs of beer for charity. Um, it, you know, this is something that Lagunitas is into two things very much. You know, one of them is music, uh, and the other ones is charities. It, it is very easy to get Lagunitas involved. Um, you know, the, as long as you have a tax ID number, this is something that we'd love to be involved in. Uh, you know, here in Chicago, we do a lot with PAWS. Uh, myself, personally, I'm, I'm a foster home for Almost Home Foundation. Um, you know, we, we always sponsor events and stuff like that you know, for the foster homes and the dogs and stuff. So if there's ever anything that you guys are involved in, whether it's your high school football team, you know, music especially, if your music program is looking for a charity event and needs somebody to kind of back them, you know, please contact us, and, and we, we like doing stuff like this, absolutely. How about uh, funding gotta... the development of my uh, brew pub? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I didn't think it was possible, but you guys, you just made me want to buy even more Lagunitas beer, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm going to release one more piece of information that maybe I should not tonight. Uh, Ooh, it. it's, it's only us. us. It's just friends. Yeah. It's all good. So, this, is, on the <laughs> this is Tony McGee talking and some of his thoughts, and he's looking to take uh, roughly in the next few years about $3 million of Lagunitas money and, and actually try to uh, jumpstart uh, 30 different uh, nano breweries. You know, maybe a guy like Pipeworks that needs $100,000 wow. to get jumpstarted off the ground. You know, and this You're is my new best friend. Well, this is, <laughs> yeah, it's a great way for Lagunitas, honestly, to do test markets. You know, for the volume that we do and the, the money that it's coming in, you know, thirty million dollars over, you know, or I'm sorry, three million over a stretched few years is not a whole lot of test marketing dollars. And the guys in the streets, the nanos, those are the ones that are, you know, that are, are creating the new beer styles and keeping shit fresh. So, um, you know, something really cool, and you know. I've, I've got a few buddies that, that run nanos around Chicago, the Pipeworks guys. You know, who, who knows, you know, who, who the next guy is to get that hundred grand and jumpstart their, their career. And it would have helped Tony McGee and Lagunitas a lot. 
back in the nineties. That's that awesome. From hundred grand. That's actually Man. that's actually a really good idea in terms of involvement with the really small micro nano breweries. In that yeah, exactly. you are you are connecting with the pulse of the communities and you, yeah, testing out new recipes and trying different <coughs> things. And exactly. that's, that's smart. Yeah, that's very good. We should give kudos to the craft community in general. Like my, the small brewers, the craft brewers, really get involved in charity, and something that you should be said over and over for us that drink craft beer, because uh, it's rare for a craft beer brewery not be involved with uh, some kind of charity event or something. And uh, I want to applaud the craft breweries for doing this. Agreed, and. You know, it doesn't just stop at golf outings. You know, it, it has to do with with marathons that are going on, with um, you know, American Cancer Society, and and it, it really is all the craft beer big time that that has stepped up and and not being selfish. You know, and, and loving everybody's product and, and everything going around and just trying to help everybody. Well, not everybody. I mean, that that's well, consistent with the craft beer community in general. I mean, I've yeah. seen at least in the Minneapolis area how so many of the different breweries actually work together. Um, there's a new nano or a new microbrewery that they're they're basically just a tap room and that's all they do. They brew for on premise sales and other breweries actually helped get them started, you know, and getting them familiar with the equipment and helping them with installation. It's a completely different environment from wow. other market segments. So where, where are you from? Uh, I'm from the Minneapolis area in Minnesota. Oh, very nice. Yeah, we got a, we, we got some good presence out there, uh, you know, in, in Minnesota, man. There's a really good group of guys out there that, that work for Lagunitas in Minnesota, and uh, you guys are doing some pretty stellar stuff, man. I, I love it. I mean, we've got a really strong craft beer presence here, and the market's still really young. Yeah. So there's a lot of room for growth and expansion. Yeah, it, it's very crazy cool. to see how uh, areas by you that how, how nano breweries or craft breweries have – you know, the people there want to drink their own liquid. And then you see a brewer like Nuglaris, who is just off the charts and how many barrels per year that they produce, and it's only in their own state, you know. And it's cool to see people yeah. want to drink their own liquid and promote their own, their own you know, backyard and stuff like that. Well, Good stuff. All huge, right, we've, we've got about five a, minutes left. So, Boris, you got uh, one more question? Uh, no, I was just going to make a statement. There's a ginormous sure. hole in the southern half of New Mexico that sure three million dollars would go great. <laughs> well, not that, all of the three million. By, Look, by I, I will give. Hole, do you mean your residence? We'll give. <laughs> hey, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> I'm going to give. Michael can have one and a half. I'll take the other one and a half. Okay. All and right. Then, See, see where I'm going with this. And then you get reassigned, Damn. and then I move to Florida. <laughs> I think you know one thing in you know specific they're looking for are guys that are doing in that that 700 barrel, the thousand barrel range. You know the people that are not going to be the flash in the pan, the people that have good product. Right, right. You know that that really want to see the direction, and they have something great going, but just getting that extra capital for a couple more fermenters. And sometimes that's the difference between life and death in a brewery and, sure. and getting to the next level and. Um, you know the brewery that I came from. You know they're they're in that boat. You know they're that small brew pub that's just barely touching distribution right now. You know maybe that's the guy that Hunter Grand is going to open up that new production facility and make them you know blow up. You know and yeah. I'm really looking forward to see what happens with that. Very yeah, I'm, cool. I'm, I will say that is a that is probably one of the coolest things I've ever heard of any craft brewery doing. Cool. Is that's awesome. like like. Literally, hey, go get that petty cash box and let's go. <laughs> let's go do like thirty nano breweries and make, and make this home brewer that guy right there making that ridiculous home brewed IPA and let let's give him a little office space and give him a one and a half barrel system. And let him have somebody like somebody that. sitting around Longanitas at lunchtime going. Son of a bitch! I got a great idea. Somebody <laughs> drop the petty <laughs> cash box. Sitting around Longanitas going. Dude, I got a great <laughs> <laughs> You know it was probably about 20 in there on the and I'm sure they thought of it then. <laughs> <laughs> Three million dollars in the petty cash box. Okay. <laughs> Are y'all hiring? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I think, thank you for your time. Hey, I got, I got yeah, a quick, I can't... couple quick questions. Or just one really for Ken. Just to, to bring it back to his specialty, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Lagunitas. Your favorite matches with food for its beers. We started it off in that conversation. What do you like best? Yes. 
Oh man, um, I, I, I had something really interesting, and this is not my favorite, but it's really interesting. Um, and, and, I, and, and beer cheese is so generic, but it was beer cheese used with hop stupid. And maybe it was a little bit too much hop stupid, but you know what? Me as a beer lover, I, I really, really was digging that. Um, and, I, and I hit that with nachos and some, um, oh, God, what was I having? Uh, some braised pork shoulder on my nachos with that cheese on there. So that, that was nice. pretty solid. Um, you know, and I think maybe this happened before we were on the air, but I talked about the, the hop juice glazed chicken. And if you have that rotisserie, yeah. um, you know, you take a nice double IPA like Maximus and, and some, some pineapple juice and some OJ, reduce it down and baste your turkey and or chicken as it's going. You know, that is a killer one. Um, overall, man, I'm, I'm more interested in taking the raw ingredients rather than the beer itself. Uh, you know, and I did talk before uh, briefly, but, you know, taking the hot pellets and infusing it in a, in a vinegar mm -hmm. and then using that for a salad dressing. But try to get more in tune with the raw ingredients rather than the beer itself. You know, I think you'll challenge yourself a little more. Okay. Hop stupid nice. and carrot cake. Winning combination. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is that what's going on right now? <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, I just devoured a, uh, a tilapia fish taco with lime, red cabbage, sour cream, and sriracha on top with your IPA. And it was, it was money. money. I, don't, I don't know why people say that don't use hops in heat because I love heat and, and, you know, for sure that I love getting that. Every time you take a sip of beer, you know, it gets hotter per bite. And yep. that's something that's a per, I, I enjoy it. Why do you have to steer away from – Hops and heat, and I'm like, no, I'll just bring it. You know, it's better. Really the, you the, the general, the general wisdom is that cooking a darker beer because of the hops, I believe it's because of the hops, accentuates in a non-positive manner the bitterness. It gets that bad, that that nasty bitterness. It, it if is, you're already into the bitterness, then hell, it might be just right up your alley. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I when when friends ask me, you know. I love spicy food. What kind of beer would you have with it? And I'm like, well, if you can, if you love spicy food, and I ask them, what's what's your level of spice? Are we talking five out of ten, seven out of ten, eleven out of ten? And they're like, seven out of ten. I'm like, go get yourself anything that says IPA, India Pale Ale, Pale Ale, anything in that range, because the spice element gets amplified with the hops from the IPAs. Yeah. And I'm, and I tell them, I'm like, I know it sounds weird. I know that I'm telling you to go get a very bitter beer. I was like, but I'm, when you crack that open and you have yourself whatever the hell you're having, that's 7 out of 10, you're going to be blown away on how actually spicy it is. And then I say the carbonation is going to help you sort of whisk away a little bit of that the oils from the spice, and it'll allow you to uh, experience the flavor all over again on your next bite and your next sip. I was like, it's it's incredible how it works with the beer. Like you mentioned before we got on air about beer and wine and how yeah. we are now in a – we're sort of turning the page where beer is very accepted when it comes to cuisine more so than wine is. You know, and it, it's all on the grains, and it's cool when you get a smoked malt or a biscuit malt or one of the heavy crystals, a crystal 60 or something like that. You know, I, I don't want to say a cab is a cab, but, you know, in general, it, it kind of is. Because when you cook with them, they don't taste a whole lot different when you cook with them. But the beers that you talked about, you know, the hops will intensify and they break down differently. But then you grab that malt forward beer, maybe maybe a sensor, maybe a copper ale, you know, is great rather than a brown or something. But, you know, there, there's a lot of different room, totally different than, than wine. And I don't know. I, I think everybody this weekend, man, if you can get your barbecue going, definitely get some beer and some food this weekend. I think you'll be, you know, very, very impressed. Excellent. Well, uh, on behalf of the Craft Beer Nation and all the moderators here, Ken, we want to thank you very much for one of the liveliest uh, spotlights we've done in a while. Super informative, one of our favorite breweries, what's not to love. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, thank you. That, that's having really, said uh, that. We would love to come back and uh, hopefully next round there, maybe we have, you know, some brewers identified here for Chicago and, you know, we'll, we'll get somebody maybe a little more in tune with the raw ingredients that are going to go down here in Chicago. You did well. You did well.
Hear that All right. Uh, on behalf of the panel, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we had a great time tonight. Don't forget, this coming Friday night, we're doing Sour Beers, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern on the Craft okay. Beer Nation. And don't forget to pay attention to our Big Sippa post because things are heating up there very strongly. Having said all that, thank you, folks. Have a good one. Cheers, man. Cheers, everyone.